It's Mr. Baumgarten with another Python Turtle video for you. So what I have here on screen at the moment is the beginnings of a chessboard. I've got the first row. Chessboards are eight squares by eight squares with inter um, swapping colors. <laughs> see if I can speak properly. Uh, so it's uh, between light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark squares. And then the next row would go dark, light, dark, light. Anyway, the moral of the story is pretty soon when you start programming this kind of thing, you will realize you start repeating a lot of your code. And initially you might think, oh, well, that's okay. I can just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. But then you've done something and you decide, actually, I want to change one little thing. But then now all of a sudden there's eight different places where I have to change that one little thing. Surely there must be an easier way. And th this is where the power of functions come in, in our programming language. So because this is all pretty well the same code, the only thing that's different between them is my go-to and my fill color. So for this first video, I'll keep that out. But then in the second video on functions, I'll uh, show you how to use those as well. But what I can do, so the part that's different between each square, I'll leave out. But the part that's the same, wouldn't it just be nice if I could just have a command that just did square 100. Right? And so it, Python automatically knows that I'm wanting a square to go for, you know, I want it to go forward and then turn right and then go forward and turn right and so on to complete a square. That would be fantastic. Unfortunately, no such command exists in Python, but we can create our own. So I come up to the top here and I'm going to say def and space. So def is short for define. So I am defining something with new within Python. And the thing I am defining is a square. And right now, I'll just take the 100 out just for now. Okay, and so square with the empty brackets, and then I put in a colon. Hit enter, and I'll see that Python has indented me automatically. I want to keep that indentation, so don't mess with that. And inside a square, I'm going to go forward 100, then I'm going to turn right 90, forward 100, right 90. And do this two more times to complete my square. All right, but, and then that's it. So I can just put, I'll just put in a blank line there when I'm done. And now I actually have a square command. Uh, the other thing that's also in all my squares is this begin fill end fill. So let's put that inside my square as well. So I don't have to repeat that everywhere. Begin fill. So this is automatically going to be a filled in square. There's no option. It has to be filled in. So I can actually just delete this now and just replace it with the word square. So I come down here where the begin fill to the end fill is. Replace that with square. Open close brackets. And do the same down here. And all of a sudden, my program has become a little more manageable because there's a lot less lines to deal with. You can see how this would have gotten quite messy quite quickly. Uh, and, this, and this is where the power of computer programming comes in. It's being able to set up your own functionality and get it to make life easier for you. So there we go. Now I just have my up pen, my go to fill color because that alternates between each one. And then I just want to draw some squares. And so now if I run this, if I've done it correctly, it will work. And I get my alternating squares. Oh, square is not defined. Okay, so here's my error message. It tells me what is going on and it tells me approximately, this won't always be exact, but it tells me approximately what line I can go to to find the error. Well, how do I know where that line is? I can come up here and I need to find this. Do, do, do. There's a thing here for find within a file. And it just need to find where it is. 
Ah, here we are. Go to line 42. Hit enter. Oh, okay. And where am I? I'm right down here. Square misspelt. Save that. Run again. Let's see if it's working this time. No more spelling errors, hopefully. All right, so that has made life a little bit easier. I now have my row of eight squares, and I could start building my next row if I wanted. Right, so have a go at creating a function, and then pause, because right now I'm gonna show you how we can make this function even more powerful. We still use four lines per square. Wouldn't it be nice if we could reduce that? Well, what happens if I want different size squares? Right, and so I've said before, how about if I had the number 100 in here? And so it knew that I wanted a square of size 100. Because what I don't want to have to do is make up square 100 and then say, have a different function called square 200 and then square 300 and make up a new function for every different possibility. Uh, in the same way, my go to command works for wherever I want to go. Just by the numbers I provide in the brackets, I want the same thing to happen with my square command. And I can do that by coming up to this, up to the bracket here, and by putting in a word. And this word is basically a name for what is known as a variable, um, which is basically just a piece of memory in the computer. It is something the computer will remember on your behalf. In this case, whatever number I put inside the bracket when I run my square function, it will store it in this thing called size. And then within my function, wherever I use the word size, it will replace it automatically with the value that it was used to run the function. So I can replace forward with size. And it, this will now work. This one will crash. There's a reason for that. That works, and then we crash. All right, missing one required positional argument size. So this is saying down here, this is ex expecting a size, and I didn't give it one. So what happens if I put in a 200 here? I get my first square, and then I get a square of size 200. So all of a sudden, I can start having one command that can do multiple things for me. Well, that's pretty good. What about these go-tos? Is there a way I could put all that in there? I can have, I could either make this function now require like an X and a Y position, or I could be even trickier and have two functions going, one function calling another. Because I might just want a normal square function of a certain size to draw wherever I am, and then have a different one that I can use to jump to a certain position. So I could just say, let's draw a square at. And so this time, I might give it an X coordinate, a Y coordinate, and a size value. And so what do I want to happen in this case? Well, I want to go to a certain position, which is going to be in my X and Y. I want to have a certain fill color. Uh, or let's leave the fill color off for now. Uh, and then I want to draw another square, right, at this position. And I, what I could do is I could copy and paste this. But this recreates the same problem I had previously. Now I've got two functions that draw my squares. And if I decide I want to change all my squares to diamonds or circles, I have to change it here. And I have to change it here. I don't want to do that because programmers are lazy. I only want to have to change things in one place, ideally. So I can make my square at run my original square function. All right, so the size number comes in here, goes out here, comes in here, and gets used there. Isn't that cool? So now I should be able to put in here square at, and this one's an x coordinate, and a y coordinate, and a size. So I don't need this go to anymore. All right, let's just clear this, because we can come back to it later. 
And so now I can put in square at, uh, let's go zero, zero, but this time this can be a square of 200. Square at, let's put one in the bottom right quadrant. So that is positive x, negative y. Uh, so 200, 200. And then we'll just make this small square. Negative y. <coughs> what happens if I run this? I get my first one. I get my big one. <laughs> and I get my small one because that's also... That's zero, zero. So that's the center point and I'm drawing the 200 out. Which confirms for me that it, that 200 matches that 200 and that 200 because it's come 200 across and 200 down. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so there was one last thing I needed and that was, what happens if I want to change this fill color? So I can do the same thing. I can do define square at Uh, with color. Now, one important thing for me to draw your attention to, Python is case sensitive. All right, so this has to be the word square, capital A, T, capital W, I, T, H, capital C, uh, O, L, O, R. Right. And so this time I might do X, Y, size, color, colon, and I'll put in my go to and I'll say fill color color square size. And now I can put all this into one command. So x, y size color. So let's make this one white, this one red, this one pink. Right, and file and run. And I've got a crash, but three requires three positional arguments for a given in line 30. Ah, because I didn't change this. Now I want to run my square at with color function. And now I get my white square my red square, and my pink. It's a very pale pink. Anyhow, functions. So now, if I wanted to draw my chessboard, uh, each square would only require one command. So there you go. A very useful little thing. Uh, when you discover yourself starting to use repetition, make some functions. This is Mr. Baumgarten signing off.